Let me show you closures. Uh, just a simple example here. Int i get zero. Action, again from the previous video, action is simply a delegate. Turns void, takes no arguments. Uh, action a gets print print arrow i plus plus. Now I, I'm making a lambda here, and I have to use the parentheses to be explicit that there's no arguments in this case. If I did have an argument, I could just put the argument there. But for but this in this case, I'm just making a no argument lambda expression or method. Then we're going to increment i's value. Then I'm going to say a right here, and then we're going to console write line i. And at first glance, this probably doesn't seem like uh, too troubling of a setup. There, I'll just run it. We see that i went to one. Let's do a a couple times here. So we'll see, or three times at least. There's three, okay? So nothing seems too out of the ordinary here, but if you look a little closer, remember that a lambda expression defines a method. And what I've highlighted here is the entire scope of the method. And there is no I defined within this blue scope. I is defined out here in main. Okay, but yeah, I'm still able to to uh, read and write to i's value here within this method. Let's do a different example. Might drive this home a little bit. Let's do static action. Give me action. Don't let it go to your head. Uh, I'm gonna take this code here. I'm going to move it down here. Okay, and then um, in fact, we just we can just return this lambda expression. Return lambda i. So, so notice it's it's almost like this method is returning another method. This is uh, again going calling methods functions and functions methods. This is a little uh, bit of functional programming here, and we'll see more functional programming in future videos. But basically, uh, I'm returning a function, and this function captures i's scope here. Okay, so watch what happens here. I'm going to say action A says, uh, let's see, give me action. And then I'm going to invoke A here a few times. Now, I don't have I's scope there, but but this is kind of weird. Watch what happens. In fact, we'll use the debugger to trace through this a little bit. F11 into this, we define I. I'm going to get rid of this uh, these boxes down here. And then we're going to return a method that captures... I scope. This is called a closure because we're, uh, I suppose, closing in on I scope or capturing I scope, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so F11. Now notice I'm hitting the end curly brace here, which technically is the end point for I's existence. All right, but well watch what happens. I, we come back to main and I'm going to invoke A. Well, A is referencing this this lambda expression here, and i's value is zero. Look, i still exists. Even though we hit this curly, i's scope still exists. So i++, plus plus. let's invoke a again. What's i's value? Well, it's one, because we already ran a before. So i i scope is, is continuing on, so to say. f11, f11, invoke a again, and we get two. Okay? Now, just from a a raw point of view. This is a nice little feature. In fact, there's a lot of times where, the, especially in using link, uh, closures come up a lot. And, and you'll use them a lot and you don't, won't even realize you're using them simply because the link syntax is so uh, unique, uh, not unique, simple, straightforward, and you'll have some closures in there. You don't realize you're even doing closures, but we'll see that later. But anyway, I wanted to introduce this idea of a closure and then uh, Let's see, let's see, I can come up with one more example. Let's turn this into a little bit of a chain of delegates. So action, ret, let's start out with nothing. I'm going to define i. And then here, we're going to say ret plus equals uh, i plus plus. But I'm going to do some curlies here. Just expand this out a little bit. And, um, oops, let's do, uh, let's see, first method. Oh, <laughs> I should probably put a console write line in there. Okay, first method, if I can do it correctly. Forgive the uh, poor typing skills here. I almost feel like a noob in a way. So there's first method. And then I'm going to basically do a second one. Same thing, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add two lambda expressions into our chain here. 
with some semicolons, hopefully. So, and this we'll call this one second method. So we have the the first method, and the reason I call it a method is because the lambda expression really is a method. And here's second method. And then I'm going to return ret. So I'm returning a chain of delegates. Now notice, neither one of these methods define i. They both capture this i out here. All right, so then when I return, when I say give me action, a is going to be a chain. And I'm going to put these on new lines just, just to make the debugging stepping a little bit easier. Okay, so every time I invoke uh, a, it's going to invoke this lambda expression and then this lambda expression. All right, and both of them are going to increment i. In fact, let's uh, let's put i++ plus plus out here just so we can see what's going on. Control C, Control V. I'm trying to make the output a little more clean. And I guess I could remove the curly braces at this point, but I think the I think the curly braces kind of hone in the fact that yes, these these are actual separate methods. So I'm going to leave them in there. All right, let's run this. F10. Step step. Let's uh, bring the console up here. All right, here we go. F11, I'm going to F11 just for the first one here. I is 0, I++. plus plus. Oh, but now we're going to go to the next one, and that's I++. Plus plus. Notice I's value is 1. I is not defined here. It's defined out here. Okay? And then we come out here, and now we're back in main. And, you know, technically I's scope was gone a long time ago right here at this curl curl closing curly brace. But, nope, it keeps going. So we'll run that A. And, oops, I scrolled down. So you see first method, second method, first method, second method. We'll run this A again. And there you go. First method, second method. So anyway, that that's closures in a nutshell. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how the compiler actually implements these. Technically, you don't need to really worry about it. But it's kind of nice to know the magic that's going on. It, I think it really proves that you're a professional if you understand the ins and outs of the things that are going on. Closures aren't um, something unique to C Sharp. In fact, closures existed a long time before C Sharp 3.0. As I said earlier, they are a functional programming construct. And in many functional programming languages, all of them, I believe you will find closures as well. They're very useful. But like all tools, use them when needed. Don't force the situation. Uh, if you want to get into some JavaScript or some ActionScript, other languages that allow you to define inline functions like C Sharp 3.0 does, or 2.0 did with the anonymous methods, um, that's another good place you can also touch these closures and use them as well.